Hi everybody, it's Helium Lemon 15 and I want this darn LP to end. Um, anyway. You remember I told you there was a, a secret where you could find female gooey? Well, we happen to get good enough uh, RNG uh, off screen doing that. And she gives you a one up, that's nice of her. Back to Dark Castle to hear this great song one more time. It's almost like a, it's like a, it's like a metal song. Oh, we go back to Goofy Kime theme once again, but for the last time in the whole entire LP because this is the last video of the whole entire LP and today is April 4th and it's Easter Sunday and we are in uh, level 7-7. And this is the room where you get the clue for the rainbow drop. I, s I sound like I sound like Homestar from Speemail 100 uh, when we're speeding up this section, but I sound like Homestar from Speemail uh, 100, where he's like, Such a lovely gathering of pies and pie people. I'd like to give a special shout out to Lemon Pretend. <laughs> For some reason, Lemon Pretend makes me lose it every time. It's just uh, kind of amazing. Anyway, you just have to remember the order of abilities that you need. And uh, we're going to be done with this game soon. It's not that I don't like this game, it's that this it's just this game. I was that close to messing it up, by the way, because those are so, sort of like one-way one-way roads. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say. You can't go back through them once you pass them. Oh no, we died, but that, uh, yeah, the edit is funnier, because the death, the death thing in, like, this game is so long. They, they play the death song, and then they wait, like, f for three hours before sending you back into the game. Um, I don't know. This game, I have some nice memories of it, but, you know, n nothing, like, really special. It's not one of my favorite games by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, only by merit that Kirby is one of my favorite series, so... That was the last rainbow drop in the game, and I'm sorry I had to be talking about, like, how blah this game was, because, you know, this game is cool, but it's not my favorite Kirby game, and, but whatever, it's still, it's fine, but it's, you know, it's a Game Boy game, the Game Boy had limited hardware, so they did what they can, um, but there are better Game Boy games, like Link's Awakening, or Pokemon Red, or, uh... Super Mario Land 2, I guess. Heck if I know. Also, yeah, speaking of limited hardware on the Game Boy, like, I was listening to this song in its sped up version, and I realized that it's literally, it's pretty much the same eight bars repeated. It's, it's a little bit disappointing. But, you know, if your boss theme is eight bars, it's still better than still more music than Pac-Man. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, King DDD is almost dead here. One, and two, no. Oh, no, he got me. And two. Give him the old one-two knockout punch. And then he's like, asking for help or something. I don't know what that animation is supposed to be, but here we have a very long... I think it's it's really funny that they're animated to come in from such specific points on the screen. Like, you almost think they're taking into account the geography of this game, but anyhow, you know, one, one comes in from the bottom of the screen and it's really slowly, and then one flies in across the whole screen really quickly. So this final boss is in two stages. Um... You have to beat them, uh, not simultaneously, uh, but back to back, pretty much. I guess you could say adjacently, but I don't know if you it would make that much sense in that context. Like, oh, you have to beat these two bosses adjacently. Like, adjacent is for two books that are next to each other on the shelf. Anyway, uh, if you can probably tell, 
the, the most damage that you're going to get is if you parry his uh, shots back at him. And then you can get in some extra shots by sort of uh, swiping him in between turns. Um, this was a pr pretty good f first fight. It's, the only thing is I had to fight him like seven freaking times and it got really annoying. Because every time you die to the second phase, you have to redo the first phase all over again, so well, whatever. I think his name is Dark Matter. So it's Nightmare and Kirby's Adventure, Dark Matter and Kirby Streamland 2, Zero and Kirby Streamland 3, and then Zero, 2, and Kirby 64. That's the way I've, I've you know, grouped those games together as sort of a trilogy plus one. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, he's dead. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is such a better song. Anyway. This guy has, like, four, like, weird, like, orbs, and the way that you deal the most damage is by reflecting those back at him. So it is like, it's like Phantom Ganon, except, like, three years before Phantom Ganon in Ocarina of Time. Uh, so it's like, wow, Phantom Ganon got its inspiration from this. Uh, definitely not. Uh, I did not know how to avoid a lot of these attacks, so this fight really sucked right here. Um, but yeah, just I remember the first time I played this game doing this fight over and over and over again and, until I learned the pattern pretty much down to a science um, for the first phase. Not so much the second phase, but I had to, I had to study the sec pattern of the second phase in order to, you know, do it decently. Um, I don't know. I feel like, you know, doing these LPs, I have to share, like, whatever memories I have of a game. And for this game, I only have, like, a few memories. I have, like, this one memory of visiting my older friend in the hospital when he broke his leg. And this one memory of, like, um, dad was at, like, on a gig or something, so it was just my mom and I, and we had, like, Dallas barbecue. I just, I just somehow associate, you know, barbecue chicken and, like, baby spinach, you know, in takeout containers with this game, which is kind of funny, because that's actually how we just celebrated Easter. We had, a we had, a Dallas barbecue takeout, um, and I got some, like, buffalo wings, which are pretty good. I keep wanting to get baby back ribs, and then I'm like, uh, oh, but they're expensive. Uh, but yeah, I am, I ate so much food for dinner, uh, that I'm feeling kind of lethargic. And I'm also feeling like, oh man, in my life I should eat more vegetables. But, you know, that's that's something <laughs> that you keep working on, and that's something that, you know, like, not every family can afford good quality vegetables, so, like, eating vegetables is almost like a privilege, but, you know, whatever. So back to this boss, which is clearly... Clearly the same as when you fight him in Kirby Streamland 3. Um, so you can see that they took the inspir uh, took some inspiration. You're, you're slowly, slowly floating through space, which I remember, like, oh yeah, the way to kind of, like, more effectively avoid that laser attack is to, like, if you think, if you think of, like, a clock face, and you know where, like, two o'clock is, then you go to two o'clock at the beginning of that attack, and then, like, when he's about done with the attack, you move to three o'clock. Um, with this, the trick to that is just that it basically just never shoots in a straight line. Um, so, I don't know. This, you, you move so slowly and you only have a limited amount of time to, like, get over to, um, oh, I, I was pretty lucky with all of those. I just happened to be in between every time. Um, yeah, he's gonna hit you because he... 
Basically, he's like dividing the screen into like three layers, so he'll do something on the bottom layer, and then on the middle layer, and then on the top layer, so... But you see how much damage those like things are worth. Like, he's already like got four bars of health depleted by, a, by us uh, after the first four seconds of battle, so it's kind of like, I don't know. But yeah, keep whittling away at him in between attacks, and you should be good. And this is actually, uh, if I was at games done quick, I would say we're coming up on time here. Time is time is when we <laughs> skip the last dialogue box. I love when they say stuff like that. It's just it's so cool. And that's time. Uh, except this was definitely not a speed run. This was anything but. I spent too much time on this game. It was very annoying. Uh, just you know, like going back and going back and going back and you know what I mean. But not to say this is like a terrible game or anything. I'm just glad that this LP is over, but like, you know, whatever. Let's be positive. King DDD is positive. Huh? Huh? What? Where am I? Was it all a dream? <laughs> okay, Kirby's just like falling through space and everything's okay because... Kirby doesn't follow the laws of gravity. So yeah, that was Kirby's Dream Land 2. Um, I think the big takeaway here is that they got rid of the Wii too soon, and they got rid of the Wii Virtual Console too soon, and they could have put, like, more games on it, and they could have put Game Boy games to on it, because the Game Boy maps to the Wii Remote so perfectly. But that's just me. Like, video game industry is not driven by people who want to replay the classics. It's driven by people who want the newest, flashiest thing for their ten-year-old cousin. So, I don't know. That's the end. Somewhere over the rainbow. It's very nice. It's like there's a there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I don't know. It's is a is a nice dreamy music, except it's kind of repetitive. So let's please make it stop. Okay, back to the title screen, and we got 94 percent. But that's that's all we're gonna do. That's basically 100 percent. So see you in the next game, whatever it is. Bye.